Chicken Frenchaise. Thin cutlets, flour dredged, egg dipped, served with a garlicky, lemony, buttery wine sauce. It's a classic, it's delicious, it's easy, and we have not made that on the channel yet, so let's just jump right into it. First up, some garlic. For this preparation, I like a sort of garlic minced paste. And let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna cut the garlic cloves in half and smash them to remove the papers. Then chop until they're the size of a small dice. Add some coarse salt to it. This is gonna act as an abrasive to further break the garlic down. And with my knife laying flat on the board and the blade facing the garlic, using the blade to start to almost chomp away at the garlic. And that salt not only helps break down the garlic, but this is just me controlling the flavor I want out of it. I find this tames the pungency of the garlic, but still gives me a lot of garlic flavor. And it's that good garlic flavor. Use your free hand as leverage to work the garlic until it feels like a paste, but the garlic remains in these small dice. Then place that into a bowl and set aside. Next, roll up a small bundle of fresh Italian parsley, slice it as finely as you can in an initial once through, and then chop it in every direction until it's processed into a fine mince. Then get that into a bowl and set it aside. Next, we're gonna need one lemon. Half the lemon, I'm gonna slice into thin rounds, then remove the seeds in those rounds. Then I'm gonna save the other half for its juice. Now the history books say that Italian immigrants in America who migrated to Rochester were responsible for this dish becoming a popular Italian American dish in that area. But in Italy, there is a preparation called indorato, which translates to encased in gold. And this is a recipe with chicken encased in egg. And in my opinion, every Italian American dish has some tie to some immigrant who brought a dish here from homeland. So the history is all fuzzy but this is a Frenchese dish inspired by something French. So to thicken this dish, we're gonna use a beurre manet, which translates to kneaded butter, where we take softened butter, knead it into flour, and that is gonna be the thickening agent to our sauce. So I have a tablespoon of flour here. I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of butter, go right into the flour with it, and I will use a little spatula and just sort of knead the butter and the flour together. Work the room temp butter into the flour until you can't really tell that there was ever flour in there to begin with. Then I'll place that back into the fridge until I'm ready to use it. Now we know all about the three stage breading station. Flour, egg, breadcrumbs. Today we're only gonna do two. Flour and egg. Season the flour and the egg, and then add a little bit of Italian oregano. I got some Calabrian oregano here. A little bit to the flour, a little bit to the egg. Then beat those eggs, mix up that flour, and then get a cutting board set up and we can slice the chicken. With a thin boning knife, bring the chicken close to you and starting at the thicker side of the filet, carefully shave a thin slice of chicken as thin as possible, making your way from the top of the chicken to the bottom. Just go through slicing the rest of the chicken and when you're done, lay the pieces out on the board and season them on both sides with a little bit of salt. Now get the flour and the egg set up. First dredge the chicken into the flour until it's fully coated. Then you wanna shake off the excess, then drop that into the egg and make sure it gets well coated in that egg. Repeat with the rest of the chicken and we can just hold the cutlets in the egg until we're ready to cook. And once they're all hanging in the egg, I just give them a nice flip, make sure they're all kind of soaked and coated well in that egg mixture. Now the last two ingredients we're gonna need is some wine and some chicken stock. Now I usually have some frozen chicken stock in the freezer, but it's the end of August and I'm interested in that in-between period where all my stock is done and it's not the fall yet when I usually make more. So when that happens, I usually go to the store and I find this guy. This guy's sold in the freezer section. It is closest to what I would make here at home and it's a really good quality. It's a little bit more expensive, but that's what you get when you pay for a good product. The box is not gonna give you the same quality. So I'm gonna need about two cups of this, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. If I need to adjust it in any way, I'm gonna have extra stock on hand. And that's it, let's get cooking. In a high rim saute pan, add enough olive oil to coat the bottom of the pan and then get it hot. And once hot, add the chicken about three at a time. Cook it hard and fast on that one side. And as you cook, you can see this thin piece of chicken cooking in real time. So I'm looking around the edges to check for browning. And, and once the chicken is nicely browned on that bottom side, and it looks like the chicken is about 60% cooked, give them a flip, allow them to kiss the other side with the heat. But we don't want to fully cook them. We want them about 85 to 90% cooked. We'll finish cooking them later. Remove them from the pan, cook up the rest of the chicken. And this time I'm gonna rotate them while they're cooking. This tends to help them brown a little bit better.
then transfer it to the plate and set off to the side. Now drain that oil to prepare the pan for the sauce, but I can feel my pan is overheated, so I'm gonna let it cool before I continue with the sauce. Once cooled, I'll add a small amount of oil and then the garlic, and I'm gonna cook that on medium high until the garlic is nicely brown. Once it's browned and it's nicely fragrant, turn the heat off and then deglaze the pan with some white wine. Now, I'm always a little heavy handed when I cook with wine, but I'm also gonna make sure I reduce it really well. So get it back on the heat and let it go. And I'm looking for the wine to start showing lots of little bubbles as it reduces. This is telling me it's reduced enough. So now I can add about three cups of the chicken broth. And again, bring that up to a simmer and allow that sauce to reduce, but not all the way, maybe about halfway, just until the sauce starts to form a tiny bit of structure which I can sort of gauge by the way it moves when I swirl the sauce in the pan. Once I think it's reduced enough, I'm gonna add in the lemon slices. Then I'm gonna juice in that half of lemon through a strainer to catch the seeds. I'm gonna season with a little bit of salt, and then I'm gonna grab the kneaded butter out of the refrigerator, and then I'm gonna toss that into the sauce and start working it in slowly. What this French technique of kneading the flour and butter together allows is for that flour to slowly incorporate into the sauce so that it thickens it without the formation of lumps. And once it's all melted, you'll need to bring that mixture back up to a boil to activate the thickening power, and you'll see it thicken in real time. We can add the chicken back to the pan with all of its cooking juices and then we're going to let that finish cooking this is going to ensure that the chicken isn't overcooked despite how thin it is on the contrary it's actually going to be tender and juicy and you're just going to let that sauce cook for about two to three minutes with the chicken in it until it becomes nice and thick now we can check the consistency it should hold the back of a spoon at the very least but you can go thicker if you'd like then we want to give it a taste it should be balanced but it needs salt if the sauce is too lemony add more butter to balance it out if the sauce is too thick, you can add a little bit more stock to thin it out. And if you like the sauce a little bit more zingy, more lemony, use less butter. And then finish with some fresh parsley. Now to serve it, I shingle the chicken around the center of a plate. Then place the lemon wedges on top so you can identify the dish visually. Then you wanna to go to town on that sauce. I got some nice bread to clean up this plate, so I'm gonna want enough sauce for the chicken and the bread. And there you have the perfect classic chicken franchise. The chicken should be tender, velvety almost. The sauce is balanced. It's lemony, but it's not punching you in the face because the butter mellows it out. It's nicely garlicky. And if you don't have bread to sop up that sauce, you're missing out the best part. Mm. A true classic through and through. Recipe's gonna be down in the description. That's all that I have today. Until next time, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.